if you're not part of my family, keep my name out your mouth. That's basically what don't take the name of the Lord in vain means. Hey everyone, I'm Rachel and today on Crack Your Bible, we are going to be talking about Genesis 6. Now, there's no way that I can cover every single thing in Genesis 6. There are people who have entire ministries built around this one chapter of the Bible because it is so jam packed with information and facts. And if you don't understand Genesis 6, you're not going to understand the Old Testament. You're not going to understand the New Testament. You're definitely not going to understand the book of Revelations. And a lot of people, they will say, and I've heard this, oh, God of the Old Testament, he was an angry, mean God. He just wanted to kill everybody. And if you don't understand Genesis 6, that might sound like a reasonable position. Let's just dive into the first four verses of Genesis 6, and then we're going to do a slight word study so that you can understand a common claim of Christians when they're like, don't take the Lord's name in vain by saying, oh my gosh. A lot of those people are completely mistaken. They, It's gone over their head. They did not understand the assignment. So let's just jump into Genesis 6, 1 through 4. Now, the Bible says that when humans began to increase in number on the earth and daughters were born to them, the sons of God, sons of God, saw that the daughters of humans were beautiful and they married any of them that they chose. Then the Lord said, my spirit will not contend with or stay with humans forever, for they are mortal or corrupted in the Hebrew. Their days will be 120 years. The Nephilim were on the earth in those days and also afterward when the sons of God, sons of God, went to the daughters of humans and had children by them. They were the heroes of old, men of renown. Er, skirt. Now, we've already gone over Genesis 4. We've already gone over Genesis 5. And now we're into Genesis 6. And on Friday, if you saw that video, we talked about how today humans, celebrities, are talking about their experiences having sex with ghosts or incubi, succubi, phantoms, demons, whatever you want to call it. They are fallen angels or these angels who sinned against God. They turned on God and they are now having sex with humans today, currently. People are talking about this right now. Now from the video on Friday, we know why these fallen angels were sleeping with women. They wanted to pollute the bloodline of the Messiah so that he could not come, he would be corrupted, and there would not be a suitable person to redeem humanity because the Redeemer had to share in the human bloodline to be a substitute to redeem all of humanity, but he also had to be God. And if all of humanity's bloodline is corrupted, they cannot be redeemed. And you're going to see this in the last days. You're going to see fallen angels taking human wives or just sleeping with women. And it's going to cause people to become unredeemable. Now, something stuck out to me while I've been studying. And we talked about genealogies in Genesis 5. We also talked about genealogies in Genesis 4. And remember, Adam had Cain and Abel, he had other sons and daughters, but he also had a son named Seth. And then Seth had a son named Enos, and it says, And in those days, people began to call on the name of the Lord. But then we know from Genesis 5 that Enoch walked with God, and that he was a teacher, and that he spent time warning people about fallen humanity, about God. We know that from the book of Jude. And I'm going to put a link up here because we've already talked about it. But I always thought that that was like a weird thing. How were people calling on the name of God, but then not even two chapters later, people are having sex with these fallen angels, Nephilim. You would think that if you're calling on the name of God, 
You have a relationship with God. But I've said this many times, you need to go back to your concordances because when you translate languages, it does not come out word for word or you might have a bad translation. So let's go to the concordance. And it says in the Hebrew, to call upon the name of the Lord is Halal Kwar Shem Yahweh. Halal means to pierce or defile. Quara means to call or proclaim. Shem means name. And then Yahweh is the name of God. So when Enos was born or Adam's grandson, people began to proclaim or defile the name of God. So the English translation is not what the Hebrew translation says. So again, go to your concordances when something seems amiss. We know that the Ten Commandments, one of the commandments is do not take the name of the Lord in vain. Don't profane, defile the name of God. So what were these people doing back in Genesis 4? where they were defiling the name of God. And then you go to Genesis six, it shows us what was going on when humans started to increase on earth. So when Seth, his brothers and sisters started having children like Enos, and then all of the men that come through in Genesis five, when humans began to increase on the face of the earth, the sons of God, sons of God or Nephilim, took human women and they had children with them. So these fallen angels, they're taking the name of God, even though they are fallen angels. They're not of God. They're not of children. They're not children of God. They're not of God. They're at war with God. They want to replace God. I'll put another link up here. That was one of the first videos I did, but you see in other parts of the Bible where it talks about children of God, we become children of God through Jesus Christ because we are adopted in as sons. We're not physically the sons of God. We are the adopted sons. We are grafted in to the family of God. And that's what makes us children of God. We take his name because we've been grafted in. We've been adopted. We don't get to take his name if we haven't been adopted into the family of God. We don't get to take the name if we're not grafted into the vine, the body of Christ. Otherwise, you're taking that name in vain. And you see, that is exactly what these sons of God were doing. They were claiming that they were sons of God when they were fallen angels. They were not part of the family of God. They were profaning and they were taking his name in vain. Oh, I'm part of this family when they are trying to destroy the kingdom of God. So when you have the Ten Commandments and one of the commandments is do not take the name of the Lord in vain. It means don't use this name if you're not in this family. If you don't, if you're not part of this clique, you don't even go here. You don't get to use the name. It's kind of like people that will change their name to the last name of a celebrity to kind of get that sort of recognition, even though they're not part of that family. They're just kind of trying to latch on like uh, Spice Girl Mel B. Her husband, who she's like in the middle of a divorce, took the name Bella Fonte after Harry Belafonte so that people would associate him with this celebrity, Harry Belafonte, and think, oh, they he must be related to him in some way. So it's the same with God. If you're not part of this family, if you are not grafted in, you're not adopted, you don't get to use this name. So don't go around using my name when you're not part of us. So we see that going on right here in Genesis 6 and in Genesis 4. People were increasing on earth. Fallen angels came down claiming to be sons of God and people were profaning the name of God. So we are going to get into a lot more stuff really soon this week. I will see you on Wednesday and I would like you to like, 
subscribe and share, and I will talk to you later. Bye.